Welcome back to the CBNQ in Wyoming. I'm Mark Pruitt. This is part two of our three-part look at the track plan. In part one, we looked at the Northern Pacific through Laurel, Montana, which is not on this map, and the Franny Cutoff, which runs from Laurel to Franny, Wyoming, and if you recall, also represents the CB&Q from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska to Orange Junction, Wyoming, and the Chicago and Northwestern from Crawford, Nebraska to Orange Junction. This video will cover the modeled portions of the Burlington's Casper subdivision from Oran Junction in the east central part of the state, westward through Casper, on through the Wind River Canyon in central Wyoming, and north to Franny. This is the track plan for the route. Only one location is fully detailed with sightings and industries on this plan, Casper. Industries are planned for other locations, but detailed track arrangements will be developed in the future. The layout is a partial double deck arrangement. The gray area to the left and at the top is the upper deck, partially located above Laurel Yard. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Meanwhile, let's start our analysis of the plan by traveling from Oran Junction in the east central part of the state, northwest to Franny. A train arrives at Oran Junction in the upper right at the red dot. For our purposes here, this train represents a Burlington train coming in on what I've called the Franny Cutoff from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. The first major town we'll reach, if any town in Wyoming can be called major, is Casper. Let's see how we get there. The train runs through the Oran Franny interchange yard without stopping and proceeds on towards Casper. Coming into Casper from the east, the train curves around the engine servicing facilities and moves on to the arrival and departure track in the yard. This is the view looking towards Casper from the east in Evanston, Wyoming. The shot was taken in 1995. Let's take a closer look at the Casper area on the layout. This is the overall plan for the Casper yard. It provides classification tracks, an engine servicing area, and two industries, both of which were actually located in Casper, a reefer icing facility and loading racks for the standard oil refinery. Additional smaller industries may be added in the future. There is one arrival and departure track and six stub end classification tracks with a total capacity of about 100 cars. There is also a caboose storage track on the right side of the yard. The runaround track parallels the yard ladder with the switch lead or drill track snaking around the engine facility next to the main line on the left. The engine facility is similar to the one in Laurel, but with nearly everything on a smaller scale. There's an 11 stall roundhouse sized to support the Mikado and smaller type steam locos seen on the Casper sub. The turntable here is 90 feet in diameter. Coal is provided by a classic wooden coaling tower. Engine facilities are reached via a lead off the yard's runaround track. The standard oil loading rack will support 20 tank cars, and the icing platform can service 24 reefers at a time, each a full train load for this layout. Once our train completes its work in Casper, it continues westward to Powder River. The modeled area on the layout is really about a mile east of the town of Powder River, where stock pens were used to load livestock onto stock cars for their trips to slaughterhouses. After Powder River, the next spot of interest is Chauvin. Chauvin is where the Chicago and Northwestern departed the Burlington trackage to continue on to Riverton and Lander. The branch to Lander will be covered in Part 3. Beyond Chauvin, the Burlington curves north past the Boysen Reservoir and Dam into the Wind River Canyon. A small part of both the reservoir and the canyon will be modeled on the layout. I'd like to include a longer run through the canyon, but space constraints limit me to about a 12 foot long section. Once out of the canyon, we enter the town of Thermopolis, which bills itself as having the world's largest mineral hot springs. Thermopolis was something of a resort town in years past, where many would go to vacation and bathe in the large swimming pools filled with mineral water from the springs. 
Even today, the water is said to have medicinal properties. The major rail industry served here was a Texaco refinery, but with the oil racks at Casper and the Husky refinery in Cody being modeled, the Texaco refinery will not be included. A few smaller industries will be included to support the town and surrounding agricultural industry, but the majority of traffic into Thermopolis will be passengers. Proceeding north from Thermopolis, we follow a long curve around the end of the Layout Peninsula on our way to Warland. Scenery in this area will follow what is generally found in this part of the state. The next town on the line is Warland. Warland is on the opposite side of the backdrop from Thermopolis. The big industry here is the Holly Sugar Plant. It receives sugar beets from surrounding farmers and via trains from other areas, processes them into various kinds of refined sugars, molasses, and animal feed, and ships the products out by rail. Moving on from Warland, we head for the town of Grable. In Grable, sugar beets are loaded into beet hoppers for shipment to Warland. There are other small rail-served industries here to support the town, and I've added another that I call Grable Roads to accept loads of asphalt from the Husky Refinery in Cody. Grable also had an engine servicing facility complete with roundhouse and turntable in the days of steam, but with two major facilities and three turntables elsewhere on the layout, I chose to forego including them here. As we depart Grable, still heading north, we begin climbing a 1.7% grade up to Lovell. We pass directly in front of the Oren Franny Interchange Yard. The track to Lovell and the Oren Franny Interchange Yard will be one integrated scene, but there will be no track connection. The next town on the route is Lovell. Lovell's rail-served industries include a large bentonite facility and another sugar refining plant. I'm not planning on modeling the sugar plant, though I might reconsider, as that would really enhance operations by providing two destinations for beat trains. The bentonite facility is modern day and did not exist in my modeled era, but I may use modeler's license and include a backdated version of it anyway to increase variety of cargo and destinations on the layout. There was also Bighorn Glass Company, which on the prototype was not served by the railroad, but on this layout will be. There's a really odd geographic feature at the north end of Lovell, a line of tall sandstone bluffs with a nearly vertical face on the Lovell side. This is a tailor-made scenic element for a model railroad and will disguise the entrance to the upper deck. We're now traversing the upper deck portion of the main line. Not much to see here. This will all be hidden track beneath Powell and Cody, which will be discussed in part three. Our train will travel above Laurel Yard and loop around above the Laurel Roundhouse and Turntable. It then travels back along the Upper Deck Peninsula, still hidden, until it comes back out on the Lower Deck just behind Lovell. Our train continues for a short distance back on the Lower Deck. We finally arrive back at the Oren Franny Interchange Yard. This time the yard represents Franny. Remember, we started this journey in Oren. We move our train to the track closest to the wall, which has the switch onto the Franny cutoff. We swap the local and caboose, reversing the direction of the train. The train, with the engine running backwards, enters the Franny cutoff, which now represents the line from Franny to Laurel. When we entered, it represented the line from Crawford to Oren. The train has now left the CB&Q main line. What we just went through in rather excruciating detail is a through train from Scotts Bluff across the Casper subdivision and on to Laurel. For through trains heading the other direction, we simply reverse the journey. Non-through trains, like tank trains from the refinery in Cody, stock trains out of Powder River, or beat trains from Grable and Powell to Warland, will traverse only part of the main line and will never see the Oren Franny interchange yard. Many non-through trains will originate in Casper, and virtually all trains, including the through trains, will stop in Casper for a motive power change. And so we come to the end of part two. In part three, we'll look at the layout's branch lines from Chauvin to Lander on the CNW, 
and Franny to Powell and Cody on the Burlington. Thanks for watching.